Hello and welcome. So tonight I'm going to be doing this on my own because Ella went out of town. She'll be back next week. So the first thing I want to get into is the thumbnail. If you noticed, it's a little crass. It says, you know, are we effed, right? And I, I got to tell you where this came from. A client of mine posed that interrogation last week, and I thought it was really funny because he just said it right out. He just said, you know, are we, you know, what the thumbnail bleeps out, right? And I said, that's funny. I said, let's cast this chart and see. And of course, what he's speaking about in this uh, interrogation is, are we screwed, so to speak, as a nation in the country here and also you speaking i think broadly for the world are we screwed are the bad guys gonna win well i would have to say this was encouraging because i'd say no this actually shows something out of the blues about to happen and i'm going to talk in just a little bit about this where biden's chart and a bunch of things that have been kind of brewing might corroborate this and what's happening in this chart is it looks like you know for a change maybe the good guys are going to win again like they used to you know i found an old picture i want to put this on the screen this is my grandfather back in the 40s right after world war ii and i thought this was a really cool picture you can see general MacArthur is behind this flag i wish the picture had his face in it too but that's my grandfather there on the right on the motorcycle and of course you can see the old photographer and i thought this was such a great picture because you look at all the old people i mean this is a timepiece you know this is the 40s and of course you can see all the old cars and the gas pumps and the people all dressed you know with a little dignity and a little pride like america used to have you know before the communists have fully infiltrated and I, I just thought this was wonderful and i was thinking to myself god what would he say if he was alive today because uh, I, I remember him. I, I really enjoyed him. He actually bought me my first motorcycle in 1968. Him and my dad came down the stairs with a bushel basket and this little motorcycle called a Whizzer. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of those, but uh, a really cool little motorcycle. That was my first motorcycle in 1968. And of course, he's the guy who taught me how to drive motorcycles. And why, why I bring this up is because, you know, I, I've I we grew up around so many people that had so much pride in this country and what they did and and how they did things you know we all have our shortcomings but in general you know I think the country has lost a little bit of that pride and a little bit of that stand-upness right now and of course we're seeing a lot of backlash for anybody that says anything like that so I just wanted to to show that and it also kind of related to the interrogation that this client and he's a weekly listener and I thank him for this question I don't mention my clients so I won't ever expose who you are that mentioned this but uh, it was a good question and it was I think refreshing to see that we aren't as screwed as we might feel we are even though I don't want to minimize this because the chart also showed a lot of trouble and this is what I've been saying and this kind of brings me up to the current events that are going on as everyone knows we just had this Mars Saturn opposition that I was talking about right last podcast and that's a nasty aspect and what all happened here well we've had FBI, IRS, whistleblowers, all this tension going on, right? You can feel the tensions building. And I have to say, I think the only difference between the Biden administration and the Titanic is the Titanic had some good music when it went down, because I do not think Biden is going to survive this. In fact, looking at Joe Biden's astrological birth chart, particularly his Vedic chart, Biden has he's in a Saturn period right now, which for anybody who's not familiar with that Saturn is always the cross over the crescent of the moon. It's karmas, right? And Biden has a nasty aspect going on right now, but it gets much nastier this December. And I would say that I think from this December forward, Biden is not going to have a good time. And of course, you know what that means? We could end up with the first woman president. And, um, you know, I don't ever want to demean anyone, but we're probably not dealing with the finest mind in the Western Hemisphere when it comes to Kamala Harris, even though she seems nice enough, uh, but um, kind of scary. So this is going to be an interesting little boat ride. And uh, I think Biden will get impeached. I really do. I do not see him finishing his term. And of course, that's based upon the inauguration chart that we mentioned several times. 
remember I had said when a when a president gets inaugurated or a king was inaugurated, whatever you want to call it, coronated, um, the time at which that happens, that swearing in puts a print on it, very much like we see George Washington, I've showed several times, lowered the cornerstone of the Capitol into the ground at a good time using the Masonic methods. So again, Biden's inauguration chart and Harris's bad, 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 bad. Didn't like it at all. In fact, I'm surprised he's gone as far as he has. And I think this ball of yarn is going to come undone. In fact, Biden's going to feel a little bit like the captain of the Titanic pretty soon. I think he's going to find the uh, water's going to come crashing through the bridge on him, and he's going down. So, and it couldn't happen to a nastier guy, could it? So, um, yeah, anyways, we won't get into that much more. But uh, Biden doesn't look too good in both his birth chart or his inauguration progression. So I think I think this is about ready to change. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's good. You know, th this is the end. No, it's not. Biden is probably the tail of the snake, not the head of the snake, the tail. And when we go up the pyramid, you know, I've always been saying this. Forget about the politicians. George was right. At the top of the pyramid, you got those who control the power and the money. And this is, again, goes right back to what I've been trying to say for a long, long time. We have a war of the titans here between the globalists and the nationalists. You know, we heard George Bush Sr. way back 30 something years ago talk about, you know, the new one world order. Right. And this is something that's been an underlying brewing theme. If anybody's ever heard of the Iron Mountain report. They literally said in that report, if anyone tries to stop us, disrupt us, we will create world war. And, um, you know, I've had a, several clients ask me about Jerome Powell. There's been some podcasts out advocating that he's possibly with one of the good guys. And, you know, he might be actually from what I see, or at least wants to be a good guy. But I, I really got to hesitate a little bit on that. Because when you look at He's at, the, again, the bottom of the funnel. He's not at the top of the funnel where it's being poured in. And this is really the people, these families and these controllers up above the banks of international settlements. This is where the power is, the coercion and the money and the control. And we really have an agenda here that we see that is very dangerous. And uh, it, it is a globalist viewpoint. They literally want the entire globe, like China, on digital currencies, and we're all retina scanned or whatever it is, you know, where the cops can look at you with their glasses and actually get your entire printout and see if you had a paper route when you were eight years old. Of course, those are things of the past. But um, long, long story short, it, it's kind of a scary new world that we're heading into. And this is something I've been mentioning for a long, long time that the ancient astrology from the flood of Noah forward talks about the great conjunctions. And these are the Saturn Jupiter conjunctions. And of course, the outer planet conjunctions as well. So very, very powerful stuff. We since the scamdemic, did I say that? I, I mean, plandemic forward. I, I meant pandemic forward uh was literally a new era that the winter solstice of 2020 even though i've had a lot of different astrologers disagree with that but in the tropical zodiac we had a saturn jupiter conjunction precisely on the winter solstice of 2020 and of course right before that about nine ten months before that which was january of 2020 which was exactly when COVID cut loose and the the alarm bell was sounded and everyone had to put their face diapers on remember and uh the streets were barren was the saturn pluto conjunction so again back to the astrology these conjunctions and for anyone not familiar with that conjunction means zero degrees that means they're lined up at the exact minute and second of longitude in the sky and these are extremely powerful and they really do bring changes throughout the world. Uh, Nostradamus would pay attention to that, even though there's been a lot of misinterpretations of Nostradamus, in my opinion. But uh, this is what a lot of your ancient astrologers, William Lilly, all the way back to the Egyptian times, would refer to these. And I have to say, in observation, they're exceedingly accurate. 
So one of the things I wanted to jump into real quickly here is talking about, I had some clients leave some interesting comments and I haven't had a chance to answer them. So I thought, I thought I would do it right now. So one client had come in and said, um, or listener, I should say, not client, listener, um, and wanted to know what gems would be good for a new moon or crystals. And I always say that's a great question because crystals really have a vibratory energy. You know, when I was studying electronics and physics, we actually find that crystal controlled clocks, which are still used in computer chips today, are actually used to synchronize energy. So crystals and gems they have an extremely powerful energy and they're actually like tuning forks. They resonate with vibratory energy. So new moons are great to use with quartz crystals and quartz are really cheap. I have to tell a quick story. There was a professor, Joseph Slater in the University of Alabama. He wrote a great book. It's called Psychic Vampires and a good book to check out. And it's all because we were talking about that last podcast, how, you know, our minds are so subjected to attack and um, keeping positive, right? Staying, staying in a positive state of mind, a generative state of mind. Well, in this book, Psychic Vampires, he had talked about an experiment that he did with a lot of his college students. Half of them set goals and they would complete their projects. And the other half did a little prayer ritual they would wash the crystals three crystals three three times under spring water they laid them out and they did a prayer over it of their intentions to complete their project and then they went outside and they shoved the crystal down next to the tree roots and they said to the trees and as well as the spirits in the trees and the angels and so on and so forth that would they be kindly enough to irradiate this energy now, most people, we look at a tree, right? You know, I know I used to cut a lot of them down in northern Wisconsin, and we don't think about this stuff, but they're living, vibrating beings, right? And um, what's quite fascinating about this is that the students who did this with crystals found their achievements were much higher than the ones who didn't. And it was way above the law of averages. So very interesting stuff. So there's a little bit on crystals. And I also would encourage you to, I talk a lot about Vedic planetary gemology. And on my website, I talk about many of the precious gems, which are far more powerful, um, that can really help balance your energy. And in readings, I always do that. I'm always talking about which gems are good for you and which gems you want to avoid. And I find gemstones are really, really powerful. And I actually make talismans for people set at a good astrological time to your birth chart. And then there's a prayer that you charge them with to the angel ruling the gem or vibrating with the gem. <clears throat> so very, very fun stuff. And, um, that's a good question, by the way. And uh, I would also add that pearls and a moonstone, which are also known as iolite, are very good for resonance with the moon. So there's the answer to that question. And thank you for that question. The next question I had is somebody was asking about a yod. And what a yod is, they, they wanted to know what is the finger of God aspects called a yod like? Well, um, I can tell you the United States has just had one of those. And what a yacht is, it's a it's a fancy word for or finger of God for when two planets are 60 degrees apart which is a very friendly aspect. And the reason it is, is because sextile aspects always com combine either fire and air, which you got to have to combust, right? Or earth and water. It's like baking a pie. So they're very congruent. They fit, they blend, they work, they support each other. So that's a very powerful energy that's good. And then the yacht is formed or the finger of God by a third planet, that is 150 degrees away from both of them. And when it crosses through the center, it creates a very powerful energy. Now, this can happen in your birth chart, or it can also happen by transit. It happens all the time. So we just had a transiting yod that just went by. And of course, interestingly enough, this is exactly what a lot of this stuff was releasing here on all the Biden administration and the stuff coming out on Hunter and the hundreds of millions of dollars that they're finding all buried and hidden and are, of course, treasonous compromised president. So uh, very interesting stuff how these work. And when people have them in their birth chart, they find it's very powerful. It, it often brings a person who has a lot of contentious things happening, but also a lot of action. So again, it's, it's very 
uh, furtive. It, it, it tends to, to make things really be activated in the chart. So that's what a finger of God is. I personally find the Nadi and Vedic astrology yogas and aspects really show when they're activated in the birth chart by the transits and progressions of planets. It's, it's really fun stuff. We could talk about this all day. So anyways, I just wanted to, to get into that. And of course, we've got yods happening in the sky all the time. One of the most important things that we have happening, and this is really important, is we have Venus about to go retrograde. Now, you might say, well, what does that mean? Well, Venus going retrograde, it appears to station in the sky, meaning slow down, right? And Venus is the evening star. And then it goes backwards. Well, as it goes backwards, it goes into the sun. And when it crosses the sun, it's very, very powerful. This is the ancient metaphor of Lucifer falling. And it falls between the time it goes retrograde, which this month is literally Sunday, the 22nd of July, coming right up day after tomorrow, and uh, very powerful. So this is the Lucifer falling. And why this one is very significant, and they all are, but this one in particular is because what it's doing is it's going in between the earth and the sun. Now, that's referred to as an inferior conjunction. The superior's on the other side of the sun. It's like a siren down the street. If it's close to you, you're going to really pay attention to it. If it's farther away, you know, on the other side of the highway or down the other end of the neighborhood, you don't pay attention to it as much. You hear it. So, this is the one that's close to us. It's going right in between the earth and the sun. So, that's referred to as an inferior conjunction, much more more powerful. And this also stirs up a lot of crazy stuff. And I think it's pretty safe to say that right now we are in a crazy time. Never before in my lifetime have I seen the country's borders being flooded with quite potentially militaristic people coming in here, people from China, people from the Middle East. Um, and we've got our fine treasonous administration bussing them and flying them around the country. And I hear there's a lot more dangerous things potentially going on with that than we know. Uh, secondly, we have, you know, the no cash bail now beginning to happen in many different places, particularly the larger cities of this country. And I'm hearing people are afraid to go out of their houses. And again, I've mentioned, I've talked to police officers, they all say, you know, we, we catch them and, and they let them out by the end of the day, you know, and they get a slap on the wrist. Commit any crime, no problem. Get out of here. You, you know, you got to go do it again, kid. Which, which way are you going to vote? You know, so it's really sad what's happened and it's a demonic force it's not just a destructive force it is a demonic force it's a destructive force trying to tear this society to the ground and then you look at what our fine treasonous president is doing with respect to the energy systems all under the guise of the climate ruse which you know i'm not saying we're not having climate issues but then take a look at the uh, magnetic storms and the solar flares that the sun has been putting out lately. This is nothing new. In fact, the Grand Solar Minimum people have mentioned this, and it's historically provable. I mean, if anybody wants to see weather, go take a trip through the Grand Canyon once. Now, you tell me there wasn't some weather. That's why we have all this sculpted landscape out here in the West. Look at Monument Valley. You know, that didn't happen, you know, just from, you know, erosion that that was serious erosion to to cause that the wind and the and the water that must have happened to cause these things so this this is nothing new and i don't believe it's farting cows and suvs but what they're using this for is to shut down the economy they they're literally tearing apart the lifeblood of this country there's nothing wrong with good clean energy and coming up with you know free energy which i do believe exists i'll tell you a quick story i think it was in the early 80s i had a gentleman who came to work for me and i i love this guy he i wish he wouldn't have passed away but he was on the original plan position radar team in world war ii that developed what they call plan position radar and this is before doppler radar and all that stuff and he was like one of the top scientists on that and he had told me in the late 60s, he witnessed a company that had developed the complete and 100% efficient dissemination of water. Now, the military refers to that as cracked water, which means 
hydrogen. So if you put a copper rod and an aluminum rod into a vat of saline water, one side will get you oxygen, the other side gets you hydrogen. It's so flammable, you have to water it down to put it in your motor. Now, a gallon of water I hear will get you halfway to Las Vegas, or probably most of the way to Las Vegas from Los Angeles. So it's extremely efficient. And I hear the military has been using this for a long, long time. So that company was mysteriously put out of business almost instantly in the late 60s. And uh, they tried selling cars in uh, outfitted with it, literally put water in the back of the car and step on the gas. It would disseminate the uh, water. So this is nothing new. And of course, you Tartarians out there are very familiar with some of the stuff that's been buried throughout history. So again, we look back to the Egyptian times and many other things that seems to have been mysteriously hidden from us. So anyways, back to the, the topic at hand here, what's going on with the country and of course the world right now. I think this is engineered. I really do. I think it's an engineered destruction of society. And of course the, result is going to be an incarceration in digital currency, a complete dependency on the state, or you could say the government or the controllers, if you will. And if they're successful, this is going to make the book 1984 by George Orwell look like a cakewalk by comparison. These people are really bad, bad people. They, they are very, very evil. And of course, Mel Gibson's coming out with a documentary right now. This will really put him in good graces with Hollywood about the child trafficking. And of course, uh, The Sound of Freedom and so many other great movies are coming out about this and RFK and many others have been talking about it. And I hear Trump's even going to mention that too, that he wants a death penalty for that. I mean, something's got to deter these people from doing this to innocent children and women and people. It's just horrible. Anyways, long story short, I think we're coming to a crescendo and back to the thumbnail of this video um and the, the interrogation are we effed and i could tell you it actually gives me a, a good feeling to say the chart indicates it's going to be tough but no there's hope at the end of at the end of the tunnel here and i think again and i'm going to mention somebody else that everybody's going to get irritated about because everybody hates trump or that everybody loves trump there's no point in between with that guy and the reason why donald trump was born with a kalasarpa yoga <clears throat> what does that mean in plain english that means all the planets are in between the moon's eclipse points known as the north and south nodes and what's interesting about this guy um, and I wondered, you know, what would cause this guy to have the first president in U.S. history to be indicted 37 times? Now he's going to be charged for uh, something else. I think uh, they're coming out on January 6th and they're going to get him for the um, other uh, issue, which was the Georgia thing. So they got they got all this money laundering charges out of New York. Plus, they got the 37 charges. Now they want to bring two more suits against him. And I always said the American legal system is the finest system money can buy. And it is. Um, I, I've seen it. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it with clients. The hideous stuff that can be done with these law firms. I actually do hope there's a special place in hell for certain law firms. There are a lot of good attorneys, but there are certain ones that are crazy what they do to people. It's kind of equivalent to the king, you know, putting the spiked boots on you and cranking them down until you scream, all right, I'm guilty, right? And they're actually doing stuff like that in China, from what I hear. They take you in the back room, beat the hell out of you, and then run you out and have you do a movie, put a little makeup on him so he doesn't, you know, look too beat up. And um, you have to admit your guilt. It's like Rambo, you know? So anyways, back to where I'm going with all this, it, it really looks to me like Trump, and when I looked at his chart, he has Uranus, which takes about 84 to 87 years to go around a person's birth chart. So this is a once in a lifetime aspect. Donald Trump has Uranus crossing over his midheaven all during next election year, starts next spring. Plus, he's got Jupiter crossing his midheaven. Now, you might say, okay, what does all that mean? 
Oh, oh, no, I did. Let me add one more. He's got a once in a lifetime primary direction. This will never happen again and for him for another 360 years, crossing his ascendant at the same time. No wonder why he's literally in the roller coaster ride of the entire history of this country. Um, I, I've never quite seen anyone who's had these kinds of transits and directions going on at the same time. And what's fascinating about this is I know a lot of people, I'll get hate mail. Well, you you mentioned Trump. Oh, he likes Trump. No, no, I'm just reporting on the astrology. So that's all I'm doing because it really it's, it's fascinating to look at Donald Trump's chart because I've never seen anybody who's created as much dissension and likability as him. I mean, it's it's just incredible when you when you look at the amount of hatred he's garnered from people and the amount of, you know, total love. I mean, he just gets crowds off the charts. So he's a really interesting study from an astrological standpoint. And again, I have never seen anyone have those kinds of progressions and transits at the same time. Uranus crossing the ascendant, and of course, Uranus crossing the midheaven. And Donald Trump, I think I was probably the only one out there who said in 2016 when he ran, he's going to win. And that was because he had primary directed sun going over his ascendant, once in a lifetime aspect. So he has once in a lifetime aspects happening right now. Why? Because Uranus takes 84 to 87 years it's not exact because it depends on when you're born what cycle it was in retrograde or direct and how fast or slow but bottom line this is a once in a lifetime aspect and very few individuals will live to have something like that happen and this is why i think he's seeing this unprecedented energy come at him well here's what's interesting i looked into this guy and I said, you know, this is guy going to end up in chains, you know, counting cell block walls and, you know, playing tic-tac-toe on his on his toes? Or, or is he going to actually pull this off? And, you know, if anybody can, this guy has defied all odds so far. He, if he, I've said this before, if Donald Trump makes it into next spring, and they just said his court date, uh, for one of the trials, I think it's the 37 document uh, uh, obs obvocation or obs uh, these 37 documents that were um, supposedly not turned in. Um, if, if that happens uh, in May, that's exactly when Jupiter hits his midheaven. And um, pretty interesting. This guy actually could pull off the presidency. And when I look at the amount of forces arrayed against this guy, and I, I've been saying this out and out, they'll either shoot him, they've already shot him legally, but they'll, they may try and physically kill him. And the way his chart is, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a shot at the presidency. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, how could that be, right? And the ones who love him are going to love what I just said. And the ones who hate him are going to hate me. But don't hate me. I'm just a messenger. If I'm right and the astrology is right, this guy's got a real shot at winning. And uh, if he was smart, he'd get somebody like RFK for his vice president. So at least you get, you know, somebody here who actually does care about the people, just doesn't say he does. So anyways, long story short, this is, you know, what I see right now. And I also want to mention before <clears throat> we close here, very important that this Venus retrograde coming up and also Mercury is going to go retrograde in August. In fact, right as Mer uh, right as Venus stations and goes direct, Mercury is going to station and go retrograde. So we got this shuffling of the deck here going on all the way into November. This is going to be a very eventful year because remember I had warned and be safe everybody because Mars is definitely by primary direction first time ever in the United States this has never happened before is going to conjunct the United States moon. Now you might say okay what does that mean? That means primary directed Mars which moves one degree per year in the United States is 277 years old is going to conjunct the moon of the United States in the third house. Don't be surprised if the owners really pull out some stops. 
if there isn't some true violence going on and attacks on power grids, cyber stuff, violence that uh, erupts much throughout the country. And I hope I'm wrong about that, but I would be on your toes because again, like the Iron Mountain report had said, if anyone tries to stop these guys and their agendas, they will create absolute mayhem and chaos. And I really believe that that's probably uh, possible to happen if divine intervention doesn't step in. And then we come into our election year. Also, I might mention there is a Neptune opposition, Neptune on the United States, all happening this fall. So we've got some really, really powerful once in a lifetime aspects happening on this country. And there it's violence, it's subterfuge, it's trickery. And I wish, you know, again, I was reporting, no, it's wonderful. But I think if we're on our toes, and we're more aware of this, we should all operate with a little more safety and awareness, not a bad idea to have a little bit of supplies and be in a safe place. You know, a little water, a little food, a little extra stuff uh, stored up is not a bad idea. Hopefully, we won't need it. But the astrology clearly says this is a very dangerous time on the United States. And into 24, which we'll be covering this more coming up, we got a Pluto return. And Pluto returns are what destroyed the Roman Empire and many other nations. It only happens about once every 250 years at somewhere between 245 and 250. And the United States is 247 years old. So, all right, everybody, be well, be safe, and I will be back next week. And thanks for listening.